Hi, kids Ami for Jesus. Happy New Year. This is our first service in 2021. Let's enter this year with a joyful heart and thanksgiving. Let's prepare our heart to receive the best from our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the year 2020, Lord. We already passed it. Thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness. Now, we want to enter this year with a joyful heart and thanksgiving. You are so awesome, Lord. We open our heart. We want to receive the best from you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's praise him. that you're joining us today. Today, we're talking about the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. Elijah needed food to eat, so God told him to go to a certain widow that would give him some food. The widow was very poor, but she chose to obey God and give her last meal to Elijah. God provided for both Elijah and the widow. Even when we don't know how God is going to provide for what we need, we can still trust in God. That's why today we're saying, every day, I can trust Jesus. We're going to start things off by singing a song together. So go ahead and stand up and sing this out with us as loud as you can. I'm 
the dance, clap your hands, don't stand still. Now let me hear you lose your voice. Come on, this ain't a
to watch a Bible story together. Like I said earlier, today's story is about Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. So let's check it out. A long time ago, there was a drought in the land of Israel. This means that for a very long time, there was no rain and all of the land was dry. During this time, there was a man named Elijah. Elijah was a prophet, so he spent his time traveling the land, helping people and speaking on behalf of God. During this drought, God had instructed Elijah to camp out beside a small brook called Cherith. There, God provided food for Elijah, brought to him by ravens, and water, courtesy of the brook. But after a while, the brook dried up. So God told Elijah to get up and go to a town called Zarephath. Once he got there, there would be a widow woman that God commanded to feed Elijah. Hearing this good news, Elijah set off towards Zarephath. When he arrived, he went out and found the woman that God had told him about. She was out by the city gates gathering sticks. Elijah called out to the woman and asked her to bring him some water. She was happy to help the prophet, but as she started to walk away, Elijah had a second request. He said, bring me a small loaf of bread as well. This may seem like a simple request. After all, it was only one piece of bread that Elijah was asking for, but to this woman, it was so much more. She called back to Elijah saying, I don't have any bread. All I have is a handful of flour and a little bit of oil and I was going to use what I had left to make one final meal for me and my son before we die. Elijah looked back at the woman and insisted that she use her flour and oil to make him a piece of bread anyway. And after that, she could make her small family a meal. He went on to tell her what the Lord had said. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day that the Lord sends rain on the land. The woman left and made the bread for Elijah and when she had finished, she realized that what God had promised came true. There was still some flour and oil left. So she made a meal for her and her son to eat. And every time she went back to make bread during the drought, she always had enough. God did as he promised and multiplied her flour and oil until the day came when rain returned to the land. The end. A long time ago, there was a drought in the land of Israel. This means that for a very long time, there was no rain and all of the land was dry. During this time, there was a man named Elijah. Elijah was a prophet, so he spent his time traveling the land, helping people and speaking on behalf of God. During this drought, God had instructed Elijah to camp out beside a small brook called Cherith. There, God provided food for Elijah, brought to him by ravens and water, courtesy of the brook. But after a while, the brook dried up. So God told Elijah to get up and go to a town called Zarephath. Once he got there, there would be a widow woman that God commanded to feed Elijah. Hearing this good news, Elijah set off towards Zarephath. When he arrived, he went out and found the woman that God had told him about. She was out by the city gates gathering sticks. Elijah called out to the woman and asked her to bring him some water. She was happy to help the prophet, but as she started to walk away, Elijah had a second request. He said, bring me a small loaf of bread as well. This may seem like a simple request. After all, it was only one piece of bread that Elijah was asking for, but to this woman, it was so much more. She called back to Elijah saying, I don't have any bread. All I have is a handful of flour and a little bit of oil, and I was going to use what I had left to make one final meal for me and my son before we die. 
Elijah looked back at the woman and insisted that she use her flour and oil to make him a piece of bread anyway. And after that, she could make her small family a meal. He went on to tell her what the Lord had said. The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day that the Lord sends rain on the land. The woman left and made the bread for Elijah. And when she had finished, she realized that what God had promised came true. There was still some flour and oil left. So she made a meal for her and her son to eat. And every time she went back to make bread during the drought, she always had enough. God did as he promised and multiplied her flour and oil until the day came when rain returned to the land. The end. What an incredible story. God took a small amount of oil and flour that was only supposed to last one more meal and he used it to feed the woman and her son until the drought was over. Our friend, Pastor Andrew, is gonna be talking to us a little bit more about the story right now. So let's go ahead and take a look. How many of you have ever gone to make a bowl of cereal and the box of cereal is nearly empty? Like there are just a few actual pieces of cereal left and then there's just the crumbs. Yeah, that's always pretty disappointing. And then you go to the fridge only to realize there's barely enough milk left for your bowl. Oh, that is the worst. This is kind of what it was like for the boy in our story. His mom was getting ready to make them one last meal. They only had a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil to make some bread. It was kind of like they only had a little bit of cereal left and a little bit of milk for it. Now how would you feel if you were the kid in our story? Not only was there not much left, but it was the last meal in the kitchen. His mom went to go prepare that meal, and when she came back, she tells him that she is gonna give the meal away to someone else who needed it. How would you feel in that moment? What would you say to your parent? Honestly, I would be confused. I'd probably even be afraid. I'd say something like, but now there isn't enough for us. What are we gonna eat? Where are we gonna get food? His mom in the story didn't know the answer to those questions, but she trusted that God did have the answers. She trusted that God was gonna provide for her and for her son. And so she decided to give the food to Elijah. Just like Elijah told the widow, God did not let them run out of food. Their flour and oil did not run out. God gave them what they needed to survive. It would kind of be like giving away that last bowl of cereal and then going back to the pantry and there's more cereal in the box. And then you go to the fridge and somehow there's just more milk in the jug. You see, the widow and her son in the story didn't know where more food was gonna come from, but they trusted that God would provide for them. Hmm. Now, we don't always know how God is gonna provide for us, and that's okay. We can still trust in Him every single day to provide for what we need. Sometimes God will provide for you in ways that aren't so obvious. Or think about this, God provided for the widow by telling her to give. Still, she trusted that when she gave, God would give back to her and provide for her. God always provides for us. His ways are higher than our ways. We can trust in God because He is good and He provides for our needs. Everyone say this after me. Every day, I can trust in Jesus. Pastor Andrew talked about how we don't always know how God is gonna provide for us, but that's okay. We can still trust in Him every single day to provide for what we need. Is there something you're in desperate need of, like the woman from our story today? I would encourage you to take some time right now to talk with your parents or your small group leaders. Talk about what that need is, and then take some time to pray together and bring those needs to God. Tell Him that you trust Him to meet those needs. Remember, every day we can trust in Jesus. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.